catch that Deion Sanders is in business with Aaron Andrews? She's launched a line of clothing called Coach Prime, uh, women's clothes. And what I find fascinating about this is the media is in business with a newsmaker, with someone they cover. When you talk, because I think Aaron Andrews still does a little college sideline reporting. I think she was at a game last week. Uh, but regard whether she does college sideline reporting or not, she's a member of the media in business with a major newsmaker, Deion Sanders. I'm old school. This, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, major no no. You don't, newsmakers don't get in bed with the people allegedly covering them. And so this implicates not just Aaron Andrews, but Fox Sports as well. I, it's not a good look, in my opinion. Your thoughts? Well, you're right. About 15, 20 years ago, maybe even uh, a little less than that, there would have been a time that if there wasn't a relationship like this, uh, where two entities were supposed to be on the opposite ends, were in business together. There was an economic motive. There was commerce being done that a lot of the media would have had an issue with this. There would have been think pieces. There would have been commentaries. There, there would have been a dissenting voice saying, wait a minute, what are we doing here? Now, it, it, I don't know if it's accepted, but there is like this silence like, oh, okay, uh, yeah, capitalism. So I, I do find it interesting but I, I do wonder, her place of employment, which I believe is still Fox Sports, right? They, they have a large hand in the coverage and shaping the narratives of college football. I wonder what their honest thoughts are like, well, wait a minute. Do we have to take her off every game now? Not only in terms of Colorado, but is she going to be allowed to say anything about the Pac-12 until they go into the Big 12 and all that other stuff? But, yeah, the lines are not just only blurred. Uh, there are no lines anymore. I, I think that much is clear. And I look, I was surprised by it. I didn't know Aaron Andrews had become Versace. <laughs> you know? I mean, look, she's got a portfolio. I don't know what to really say other than that. But there's there's no doubt about it, Jason. The game has changed, and the rules that maybe you and I grew up on, those rules are no longer in place. Well, I'm not trying to put Aaron Andrews on blast. I, I just want to talk about the reality of this. And, and the reality of what you as sports fans or people interested in the sports world are just people interested in the media and the media's coverage beyond sports is that Aaron Andrews doing this deal, Fox Sports allowing it, it it's a bat signal to every young reporter, male or female, or even old reporter, male or female, anybody in TV, it's their goal now. How can I get in business with Patrick Mahomes, Deion Sanders, any of these people that I cover? Is there some synergy that I can use that can be beneficial? And so if you're Stephen A. Smith, for example, and, and it's like, is there some kind of business deal for me and Deion Sanders to do? Shannon Sharp, or any of these people that have their own individual podcast or whatever. Again, Pat McAfee is paying Aaron Rodgers millions of dollars, they said, to, to appear on the Pat McAfee show. It, it, there's not a chance in the world that, because Aaron Rodgers is a current player. We're not talking about a retired player. A current player. You're not going to get any kind of objective point of view from the Pat McAfee show on Aaron Rodgers. You're not going to get with Shannon Sharp or Stephen or any of these other people that potentially want to be in business with Deion Sanders or any of these news, any of these athletes. You're not going to get their authentic views because in the back of their minds, they don't want to be cut off from potentially doing business yeah. with these people. It, it, it's... Well, Jason, it it's also a, goes further than that. Let's say there's a star athlete and a well-known reporter knowing that these opportunities are now the norm. Let's say five to ten years before this ever hatches, 
you might take it easy in terms of the coverage. You may be less critical in the back of your mind because you know, like, you know what, that guy could be a future business partner of mine. So you know what? Even though he went over 50 in the World Series and struck out 30 times and dropped the ball five times and was one of the reasons why they lost the series, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna be easy on him because one day me and him could be partners. See that see this this thing goes deep in terms of the roots of all of this. It, it, it Steve, and that was what I was getting at. And so Let's say you're a young reporter on your way up. You're some 26-year-old. Why take the risk of criticizing any of these athletes? Because it, it may cut you off from access, one, right. because now everything's about access, and then business deals, too. And, and that's why, I mean, I sound, people don't understand. The, the, the reason why I get so hyper-criticized by people is because the norm has moved. What I'm doing now used to be the norm. Hey, I'm paid to tell you what I think about athletes and coaches and executives, and I tell you exactly what I think. That used to be the norm. No one thought it was odd. Now in this new era where everything's about access and everything's about, hey, am I friends with an athlete? Do I get invited to their parties? Do people, do they share my stuff on social media? And all that, do they support me on social media? I now sound outside the norm because I actually say what I think about these athletes. And it's like, oh, you're just hypercritical and blah, blah, blah. And it's everybody, no one has any clue. Like, I'm just doing my job. But the job has changed now. And people think you should all, everybody should be a groupie to an athlete or be in business with an athlete. I was taught long ago and someone told me, go, Steve, with what you write and what you say, if you never get anyone that you are covering upset or a little bit irritated at you, you're probably not doing your job. You're probably being a publicist. That could be a good gig. But again, if you want to do some sort of true journalism and be a columnist that's respected, look, I get it. Every time, and I'm sure you do too, Jason, you type something up. You've thought about it. You've written down the notes and you say, okay, and my byline goes on it and you hit send. You have to realize not everyone is going to like this. Certain people might be angry and they might cut off access and never talk to you again. You have to have enough guts if you want to do this job correctly or the way it was meant to be done to understand the ramifications of that. Because there's going to be people that love it and there's going to be other people that are really jock sniffers that are going to hate it. But, but my view is this, and I'll and go back to what I said earlier. You can't please everybody. You try to please everybody, you please nobody. Well, just even though, because we haven't even addressed the whole access or the, the, the point of view, the angle, that there's these information gurus, Adrian Wojnarowski, Adam Schefter, they have to protect their sources. And so... Let's say you're uh, Adrian Wojnarowski and you have an adversarial relationship, perhaps. I don't, it used to be the case. I don't know what it is now. With Rich Paul, LeBron James's puppet that LeBron controls. Well, you can't get the information from Rich Paul right. and all the athletes he covers. And so either you take it easy on them or you become totally adversarial with them. I, I, I don't know, but... This whole, we can't rely on the people that cover these teams and cover these athletes because they're just too compromised. And I'm not trying to beat them up, but they want the information that the athletes and their agents now control. They want access uh, so they can be friends with them. And now they want to potentially do business with them. The, the <laughs> there's supposed to be a separation of media and athletes and media and the people they cover. And that separation has been totally blown to smithereens by ESPN and Fox Sports and just the, the mainstream major entities that are supposed to cover these teams and athletes and executives. They're all in bed together now. Yeah, Mike Royko is probably rolling over in his grave. That's all. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Hey, if you like this content, 
make sure you get in the comments. Tell us what you think about Aaron Andrews and Deion Sanders being in business together. If you really like it, I need you to do something else. I need you to bank on yourself. If you're looking for a retirement plan that always wins, that always works, has never had a losing season ever, go to bankonyourself.com slash fearless uh, for your free report. Bankonyourself.com slash fearless. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.